The Bayern class was an important development for the German Navy, especially with the change in the caliber of main battery gun the ships were using. Previous German designs, like the predecessors, the Koenigs, used a 12-inch caliber gun, while the new Bayerns would use a 15-inch caliber gun. Not only that, but the class didn't have a central turret or wing turrets like previous battleships in the German Navy, meaning that they could bring their entire main battery to bear on either the port or starboard side. But the ships didn't get commissioned in time to really see much action in World War I, and therefore couldn't really make a difference for the German war effort. With that being said, the Byrons faced a similar fate to many other ships in the Kaiser Lika Marina, being scuttled at Scapa Flow in 1919, except for Baden, the second ship of the class, would have a rather different and interesting fate. So design work actually started rather early in comparison to other contemporaries, where design work on the Byron class began as early as 1910, with the initial designs having an armament of 12-inch guns rather than 15-inch guns the ships would actually be equipped with. After years of deliberation and coming up with the appropriate designs for the new class of ships, by the time the fourth German naval law was passed in 1912, the designs for the ships were in place and ready to go. The ships would displace around 28,530 tons standard displacement and around 32,200 tons full load. For propulsion, she would have 14 boilers that powered three steam turbines that drove three screws with around 55,200 shaft horsepower and being capable of around 22 knots. Now, the armament consisted of eight 15 inch guns or 380 millimeter guns and four twin turrets with two super firing forward and two aft. Her secondary consisted of 16 6 inch guns along with an anti-aircraft battery of two 3.5-inch or 88mm guns, and five below-the-waterline torpedo tubes to round off the armament. The armor scheme consisted of an armored belt of between 6.7 and 13.8 inches, or 170mm to 350mm thick. The deck had an armor thickness of between 2.3 to 3.9 inches, or 60 to 100mm. Now, the turrets had an armor thickness of between 3.9 to 13.8 inches, or 100 millimeters to 350 millimeters thick. The Byron was laid down in December of 1913, launched in February of 1915, and commissioned to the German Navy in July of 1916, while the Baden was laid down in December of 1913, launched in October of 1915, and commissioned to the German Navy in March of 1917. Now, the Byron was assigned to the first scouting group, which was the battle cruiser reconnaissance force of the High Seas Fleet. In August of 1916, after Jutland, the only two operational battlecruisers were Moltke and von der Tann. Two Koenig-class ships, the Markgraf and the Grosser Kurfürst, along with the Bayern, were added to the group to make up for the lack of battlecruisers. Now, Franz von Hipper, who was in charge of this group, was to bombard the coastal town of Sunderland in an attempt to draw the British battlecruiser squadron under Admiral Beatty out, and have the rest of the German high seas fleet with 15 dreadnoughts trail behind. But the British were aware of their plans, and the Grand Fleet sortie to meet them. To which, after the recent Battle of Jutland, the Germans didn't feel quite ready for that tussle and returned to port. The next action the Bayern saw in early September of 1917 when the German Navy decided to evict the Russian Navy from the Gulf of Riga after the Germans captured the city, which was known as Operation Albion. The German force consisted of 3rd, 5th, and 6th battle squadrons and a number of escorts. They would be facing off against Russian pre-dreadnoughts and armored cruisers and their escorts. Now, for the sake of the video, the significance of this action concerning Byron is that at 5.07, Byron struck a mine as she shifted her position and began to flood heavily. She would have temporary repairs done and then make her way to Kiel for full repairs, where a number of torpedo tubes were gotten rid of for additional watertight compartments and the addition of more anti-aircraft guns. Now, in the later part of the war, Byron was assigned to patrol in the North Sea. Along with this, the Germans had been attacking British convoys with light surface forces, forcing the British to commit battleship escorts. With all that being said, on the 22nd of April, Byron and the rest of her squadron were set to attack British convoys, but were delayed until the 23rd due to heavy fog. Nevertheless, by the 24th, they arrived at the expected convoy route, but due to faulty intelligence, they completely missed the convoy and were forced to retreat. During that time, SMS Moltke lost a propeller and was sunk by a torpedo fired from a British submarine. This was basically the last operation Byron was involved with until the ship was ordered to scap a flow to the armistice and scud along with the majority of the high seas fleet on June 21st, 1919. Now, SMS Baden didn't really participate in many operations due to coming online so late in the war. However, she was planned to be used in a last ditch sortie of the high seas fleet in October of 1918 which was just a straightforward push to meet the Royal Navy, hoping to use it as a bargaining chip for future negotiations. 
But due to the sailors not really wanting to go die for some abstract idea of honor for the Navy and nation, they promptly mutinied and the sortie was cancelled. Baden would go to Scapa Flow later than the rest of the high seas fleet, but would be kept with the rest of the ships of the Kaiser's Navy. The British had high hopes for the battleship, as they wanted to see what technological goodies it would hold. Baden would have a different fate from the rest of the high seas fleet, because some of the crew on the morning that the scuttle orders went out were away from the ship, and the British authorities managed to get control of her, and managed to run the ship aground in shallow water, meaning she was able to be refloated by July of 1919. For the next two years, she would quote-unquote serve under a British flag, but was never recommissioned. The British conducted experiments to her machinery and weaponry to see what the ship could do. So, the British inspectors were very impressed by the advanced nature of the designs and the equipment on board the ship. But after they were done testing the ship, they didn't really have much use for the ship, especially with the Washington Naval Treaty coming up. So, they used her in gunnery practice to test the latest British armor-piercing shells. She would be sunk and then refloated for more testing in August of 1921, where she was finally sunk for good. I think that these ships are particularly interesting because they represent the height of Imperial German naval ships that were actually completed. Along with that, their main battery turrets were a huge improvement compared to the predecessors. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe as it will help the channel to grow. Also, I'm thinking about branching out and doing some more videos on battles and other stuff rather than just ship descriptions.